So behind me, it looks like there's an ocean, but obviously this is fake, this is virtual production, but it's not an LED wall, it's projection with a Christie projector. But then we've got another thing going on here too, because not only is there an ocean behind me, there is also a perfectly lit green screen. We're filming two realities at the same time, the perfectly lit ocean and the perfectly lit green screen. And this video, we're gonna explore what the future of virtual production looks like. You're watching VP Land, special thanks to our sponsors, Blackmagic, View, and Lucidlink for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And now, back to the video. All right, so uh, Chris. Joey. Tell me what we got going on here. So, Christy Digital is at the JBNA pre-show, NAB pre-show, and this is the first public demonstration of what we're calling virtual projection. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is essentially we're replacing a lead wall with a projector, saving people a lot of money, and then maximizing what you can get out of the production. We also got something else going on here too. Oh, a lot of stuff going on. All right, and so we are looking at frame remapping again, Re right? Es essentially, yes. Yes. right? And so it's a high frame rate system, meaning that we are generating more light than anyone has imagined capturing. Mm -hmm. With more light data, you get better results and you get more creative flexibility. So that projector is running at 240 frames per second right now. Okay. Um, it's a broadcast 60 Genlock system. Um, but then the lights are also doing 240. The camera is running at internally 120, even mm -hmm. though it's Genlock to broadcast 60. So everything is moving super fast. And with that speed, you're able to leverage more light than the eye and brain can comprehend or see. Mm -hmm. And so the benefit of that is you can have an in-camera visual effects capture, walk away the final pixel, but at the same time, you're simultaneously getting a green or a chroma color blue whatever you want, honestly. Right. And then you're able to leverage that for maximum flexibility on set. You're not married to whatever you do in pre-production anymore. You can be very creative on and spontaneous, right, with what you want to do and not have to tell everyone to wait and have like, you know, your technician try to get your scene looking perfect because someone decided, you know, they wanted to do something different. Yeah, or you want to swap it out later. Right. So. Let's back up a second, because right now you're looking at the camera here, yeah. you'll see just a nice beach background. Yeah. But we're capturing two separate video streams out of the red right now. We're capturing the beach background that we see with yeah. virtual projection yeah. off the Christie. Correct. And then we're also capturing a green screen. At the same time. At the same time, just in case we wanted to come back in later. But that green screen could be another angle. It could be any other output that we want. The Correct. flexibility of having that green is you can leverage it in real time. You can do multi-camera. So you can have a multi-camera production. You don't have to worry about frustums anymore, mm -hmm. right? Um, the flexibility that you have, just having a B cam, right, is so phenomenal. Yeah, but and it's a broadcast have, solution. Like a camera up here. Yeah. yeah, we've got multiple red digital cameras. Uh, they're V Raptors, um, which are amazing. They have mm -hmm. a phantom track mode mm -hmm. that does that de interleaving of the signal. Mm -hmm. So when it runs at 120 frames per second, internally that camera will de interleave that single, give you an A and a B feed in real time. At 60 frames per second yeah. if you were running broadcast 120. 60. Right now, what are you running? 60 and yeah, doing 230? 60. So Two. no, no. So it's the project setting is, is broadcast 60. Okay. And so it's over cranking internally to 120. Okay, and giving us a 60 That's frame right, output. that's right. Okay. But you can do that math however you want to do it. It's always going to double it Could you do like three or four as if you have enough? So certain cameras, frame rate, right? Uh, so rate. A, a Sony camera, I've seen uh, capture eight different light realities. Uh -huh. um, what are you going to do with that? I don't know, but it's, people can get really creative, yeah. right, about what you do with all of that content. Um, for for me, I'm a practical guy, um, and having the green is the most valuable thing, right? Yeah. Having that chroma really just later. unlocks everything that I need to do on set. I remember the other use case we did see uh, at our last interview two years ago was yeah. uh, tracking markers. Tracking, yeah. yeah. Right now we're using a Zeiss tracking system, mm -hmm. um, and it's locked in and works great. Yeah. Um, all the normal, I would say, standard virtual production components are going to work with this system. Mm -hmm. um, the, the key is that everything is gen locked together, mm -hmm. right? That gives you this flexibility and the magic on set. And so these mimics by KinoFlow, they're gen locked. Mm -hmm. um, they have a high refresh rate as well. They go 30,000 frames per second if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're able then to keep up with the rest of the system yeah. um, and generate the light, the image-based lighting, and then also the visual effects light treatments that you can apply. Um, we haven't even talked about the visual effects right, component of this, the mm. post-process that it enables. Um, Paul DeBevic wrote a wonderful white paper a couple few years ago, um, around the time of that Ghost Frame demo two years ago that you covered, mm. um, about using magenta and mm. green and then 
feeding that into a machine learning algorithm and getting the perfect holdout map. Absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. Wispy hair, no problem. Water, transparency, no and problem. So we're able to do that because when we're having the green light, we can shine magenta. Exactly. Out of the key, out of and, the minutes. And you and I would never know. Like yeah. we are not going to look like purple monsters. Subliminally, we are going to be in a volume of magenta. Mm -hmm. And then you have that in post for the most efficient post process ever. And that just makes grabbing your mat a lot easier. Perfect. Yeah. You can't beat perfection. I want to back up for a bigger picture because I know we're jumping into kind of frame remapping, yeah. but just virtual projection. Yeah. Not having all the extra complicated stuff we have now. Yeah. How does that compare if you were looking to do some sort of uh, VP setup? Yeah. Projection versus LED wall. So, I like to say you can drop a zero off your budget, mm. and that's significant. But that's even just your upfront cost. But then every month. People that buy and invest into big LED, they understand that they have to pay six figures to keep it in standby mode. Because if you turn off your LED, you have to do a recalibration of the color. You have mm. to bring in a team of people, and they're not inexpensive. And so people leave them in standby, and it's tough to create a business model around that. When you're bleeding out hundreds of thousand dollars a month when it's not in use, that's a tough pill to swallow. And a lot of sound stages are suffering right now mm. with that bad business model. We solved that. A projector you can turn it off a thousand times a day is going to hold its color. It's going to look great every time it turns on. This is a Christie Griffin 4K 50,000 lumen projector. It's pure RGB laser, um, and so that's what is, allows that speed of refresh rate. Lasers, right? Mm -hmm. Lasers. <laughs> uh, laser beams. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like yeah. we're we're there, right? Like yeah. technology has advanced so impressively um, that we can do these things now. Yeah. Okay. And then coming back to re-explaining, just because I know sometimes. I remember this took me a while to figure out what was happening when we were talking about frame remapping yeah, uh, two years ago. But so we've got the projector with the background. Yep. We've got our mimic lights yep. both shining on us right now, but then yep. also we have some mimic lights up there yeah. shining on the background. Yeah. And so camera's running and we have one frame capturing the ocean background and the ocean lighting onto us. Yep. The green lights are off. Right. Other frame appears these lights are either off or magenta. Yeah. And then the green light shine on the background. Yeah. And it just does this. My only quick my only notes videos. on that is yeah. I would call it subframe instead of a frame. How is it subframe? Because how? it's so every frame has both of these light treatments. And so within a singular frame, there are what are called subframes or different light realities that we're capturing. And we are okay. generating those subframes by moving faster than the project settings. And so if the project settings is at 60, we run it at 120, that's a lot more light, right, than we need to capture, but we are choosing to capture in order to have this flexibility with the production. So how does it system. decide on the camera what is the final image that appears on that frame when we get our file back? So it's a de-interleaving process okay. called Phantom Track in, in the red V Raptors, and uh, I think the Komodo X's have it. A lot of their cameras have it. Um, and they just know, right? It's, it's programmed and it's a very simple, I think a few lines of code that essentially looks at the content and divides a frame in half. Okay. And so you get an A and a B, right? Frame out or subframe that's coming out. So, okay. For every frame you get two. And you can have more than that, right? But practically you just need two. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I like to talk about. I, I know when we have our creative talks together, yeah. we like to imagine like, whoa, right? How far can we go? Yeah, yeah. Um, but for all intents and purposes, if you have two subframes, you can do a lot with that. This is a very lighting. practical use case. You have everyone can see what the real background is. It's not washed out at all. And then you have your green chroma key backup. Yeah. Background as a backup. Yeah. So you can achieve later final it. pixel. Yeah. And you can have your safety. So producers love it. What? How much brightness are we seeing right now? And is this cranked up? No, this is about like seventy percent. Okay. So it can get a lot brighter. Right, yeah. Um, you know, but it's silly to be running it that bright. You know, um, we're we're just running it at a nice, nice and easy type of uh, mode. You yeah. Know? Um, all right. I mean, have you seen besides what you're developing here any other uh, trends in virtual production? Yeah, um, I'm seeing a lot of pain in, in virtual Ooh. production. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, losing their jobs because shops are closing because the business model is breaking. And I'm, I think that we're really timely with this virtual projection Ooh. offering because we're leaning into machine learning, we're, le we're leaning into AI, we're not running away from that, and it's here, right? Embracing it and allowing people to go back to work, right? Ooh. You don't have to spend tens and tens of thousand dollars on a soundstage budget mm -hmm. 
for a rental of a day, right? You can now have a business model that can make that a lot more affordable. And if you have a green screen psych, we can just paint it, and add a projection system and a couple of mimics, and then you can have your reference, right? This feels like something magic. that makes your space more flexible as well if you're not committing to that full build out of an LED wall and the projector could be on, could be off. Yeah. And you could use the space as a regular soundstage. Absolutely. I mean, ProPsych will put up a wall for you if you don't have one, mm -hmm. right? Or you can use a screen. Um, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. Uh, speaking of which, Live Effects Assimilate is, is doing the rendering here. Um, they're using a silver draft computer and they're doing a phenomenal job. And we also have right next to it a TriCaster, mm. this RT TriCaster that's doing the key right downstream, just like the you know the live effects. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. We're kind of our Pandora's box can do it. Christie's Pandora's box, um, disguise, right? Like yeah. you know, Pixera, whoever can push content into a projector, right, can yeah. all of a sudden now be a very very powerful creative machine. Um, and so I, the trends is the pain. And I hope that people like you, right, are going to get the word out that it doesn't, you don't have to you don't have to go through that no more. We've we've solved for it. That's what we're doing with this video. Thank you. Uh, all right, where can uh, people find out more information? Awesome, uh, ChristyDigital.com. Um, my name is Chris Barnett. You can reach out to me personally. I don't know if I should throw my uh, email address out to the we public. Link to, we'll link to it in the bottom. Link to it? Yeah. Okay. Or we'll, um, we'll, put, we'll link to your LinkedIn. We, we have a, a website. It's a microsite, uh, Virtual Projection. That's what we're calling it. You can okay. just Google it, Chrissy Digital, Virtual Projection. It'll be top result. You can read all about it. Uh, Kino Flow just put out a white paper. Mm -hmm. It's really good and kind of explains this in great detail. If you're a reader like I am, I like white papers. So you can go check that out too. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Joy. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And thanks again to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible. For more NAB videos, be sure to check out our playlist with all of our NAB coverage. Catch you in the next episode.